in what one could say is a case of saying the quiet part out loud, Representative Marjorie Greene suggested that forced birth is a great idea because those babies will be able to go fill jobs. Sitting in here earlier, I was listening to the discussion on jobs and that the whole reason claimed by my colleagues on the other side of the aisle is that they want to bring in as many illegal aliens as possible, give them an amnesty so they can fill jobs in America. And then they talked about that we have a population growth problem in the United States. They were talking about the real issue of it being the lowest population growth and why this is a problem. Well, I think we can all say that if maybe perhaps 63 million people weren't murdered in the womb, we wouldn't have a population growth problem, would we? That's not women's reproductive rights. That's called abortion. It's called murder. And that's led to, yeah, a population growth in America. But Democrats claim that we've got to replace Americans with illegal aliens to fill jobs. That's their solution. That's their solution. And take away jobs from Americans. Okay, so uh, there's a lot here. <laughs> with Marjorie Greene, there's always a lot, all right, to break down. Uh, first off, let me talk about the population growth problem that she talks about. Oh, you know, population growth. So what we need to do is we need to force women to have babies. Or why don't we try to make a, a country that is less hostile to families? <laughs> I mean, we don't have paid leave. We're one of the only, I think we are the only developed country on the planet that doesn't have mandatory paid leave for women, for both uh, mothers and fathers. Ah, wouldn't that be nice if we did? We also have a situation where there's very few families that can afford to not have both parents working. We have childcare that is astronomically expensive. If you, if you actually want to encourage families in this country, encourage women to you know, have children, uh, you might want to make it, again, economically more feasible for families to be able to survive and thrive in this country. I mean, that would be, that, that would be one step that they could take to actually reduce the amount of abortions, which, by the way, are actually fairly low <laughs> So in this country. Uh, but anyway, that, that's not their plan. No, 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 no. So let's get to the jobs part, though. So unemployment in December was 3.7%. That's fairly low. <laughs> you don't have a lot of people out there who are not working, who are filing unemployment claims. So I don't exactly know what she's talking about. And, and look, I know uh, the unemployment claim is not 100% uh, reflective of how many people are not working. There are people that don't choose, uh, you know, that, that choose not to work because they can't find good jobs and things like that. Uh, because of childcare, as I mentioned before, uh, being a big problem, I mean, if you're going to go to work just to make enough money to pay for childcare to go to work, then you haven't really, <laughs> you haven't really gone forward at all. No, you, I mean, again, what would be the point of working at that point if you're just, all the money is just going to childcare? So, I mean, one thing that, hey, Congress could actually fix if they wanted to, but they don't. Uh, now, getting back to the jobs. The latest data showed that employers added about 800,000 more jobs in 2023 than they did in 2019, which makes sense because in 2019, it was COVID-19, there was a lot of, a lot of unemployment then because companies had to shut down. Now, the share of workers they also found between the ages of 25 uh, and 54 actually soared to the highest level in nearly two decades, according to the Labor Department. The entire civilian labor force grew in 2023 by the most in a single year on record. So when it comes to employment, I mean, I, I don't see what she's talking about when you look at the data that, oh, we're having to bring people in uh, to fill those jobs. And the other part of that, of course, is it, this is, goes along the lines of nobody wants to work, which is just a load of crap as well. No, people want to work. They just don't want to work for substandard wages. They don't want to, you know, 
work in careers where they're not appreciated and they don't get paid enough. So th that's the issue, right? Now, getting to the undocumented immigrants, because again, this is what this is about. Uh, nobody's planning to bring in millions of undoc undocumented immigrants to steal your job. All right, that's, that's not a thing. But they're, they're doing the old South Park bit. They're, they're taking your job, dark nerd! But it's actually more insidious than that. Because the taking your jobs narrative is ridiculous. But also, again, when she talks about it uh, in the words that she uses, in the phrase that they're coming in and replacing you, they want to bring people in to replace you, far more insidious. It's actually Nazi talking points. Uh, and as, to far, as far as that goes as well, there's actually a lot of projection here. Why do I say that? Well, look, uh, Republicans don't want immigration reform because they want undocumented immigrants to come in and get exploited by corporations. I, I know, right? You say, well, what, what are you talking about? They want to build a wall. They're not going to actually build. Okay. Um, but they talk about it because they know that a large portion of their base is racist and xenophobic. <laughs> okay. And actually believes that immigrants are coming in and stealing their jobs. And of course, they can't really point to examples of that. And funny enough, uh, there are there were situations during the Trump administration where they did deport people who were undocumented, and they had Republicans saying, "No, not that guy. He was one of the good ones. He was a hard worker." No, no, they're pretty much all like that. <laughs> okay, that that's the issue here. All right, but look, there are um, issues with undocumented labor, of course. It does drive down wages for American workers. It does weaken unions, et cetera. And it leads to disastrous consequences for the migrants themselves. For example, just yesterday, a Mississippi, a Mississippi slaughterhouse was reported, and this slaughterhouse supplies chicken to Chick-fil-A, reported that they allowed a 16-year-old worker to get sucked into the equipment. So he was working in very unsafe conditions, that ended up killing him. And yet nobody could tell, apparently no one could tell that he was 16. Because he claimed uh, on, his, on, uh, on his employment papers that he was 32 years old. But you couldn't tell that it was a teenager? No, of course they could tell. They knew it. Everybody could. Uh, and they just ignored it. So they could pay him a lot less. And of course, the thing about migrant workers is that if if they 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 can't really complain about the working conditions being unsafe because they're worried about being deported and losing their income, so there's that. And now OSHA said it had cited this Georgia-based Marjack poultry for 14 serious violations and proposed more than two hundred thousand dollars in fines, which I don't think will do jack. Honestly, nothing's going to change until some people get thrown in prison. Some CEOs get prison time for, you know, hiring undocumented labor uh, and then allowing them to work in horrible conditions. Okay, this is not going to happen. The kids should never have been allowed to work in that plant and it shouldn't have had to. And if the parents were actually allowed to have a pathway to citizenship and make a decent wage, they wouldn't have to send their children to work in these uh, very disastrous conditions. Uh, so now the way to fix this, of course, is to fix the immigration system. Allow people to have a pathway for citizenship. I know. Get more immigration judges down there so they can adjudicate these cases where migrants will come in and say, okay, you, you can be here and here is your legal documentation. Here's your pathway to citizenship so that you can pay taxes, and actually get something in return for taxes, because as I mentioned before in other segments, undocumented immigrants pay a lot of taxes. They don't see anything in return. Okay, uh, and now uh, you also, if you're documented to have protections against exploitative companies, they also, uh, you know, it, it also helps them be able to bargain for higher wages, and most importantly, become Americans. That's the ultimate goal here. This should be the ultimate goal of our immigration system is set out a pathway for people to become Americans, to add to the country. That's it. Now, Republican politicians, they do not want this to happen because, for one, they're paid by companies to allow them, uh, to allow the companies to exploit labor. 
because they're vulnerable. They're easy to exploit. Okay. Not only that, but uh, Republicans, one of the top issues, for example, uh, among Iowa voters is immigration, immigration. So this is a political winner. So if they don't solve the problem, they can continue to fear monger about it and win elections. And they're doing that in Europe, by the way, as well. But that's why you have a lot of the right wing taking over in European countries because of the worry about immigration. So now that gets to the Republican voters who don't want to fix the immigration system because they hate brown people. They don't want to fix it in a way that allows people to have a pathway to citizenship to become American citizens and to not be exploited. They just don't want brown people here, period. Now that leads me to Green's comments on abortion and where it's one of those uh, she admitted, right, kind of things. You see, the right wing does not want more babies, okay? Uh, that's not why they're so-called pro-life because it, it, in, in so many different ways, Republicans have, chose, uh, have shown that they're not pro-life, that they're uh, pro-death, their death cult, right? The thing is, when they say that they want uh, more babies, they want more, they mean that they want more white babies, okay? They want to force white people to have more kids. That's their family values, okay? And, and it's, look, it's because they think other races are inferior. And that's why she references white replacement theory. When she says, ah, Democrats are bringing in illegals to replace Americans. And when she says Americans, she means white people. Let's be honest about that. Okay. So that's why there are so many different problems with what she said. It's one racist dog whistle conspiracy theory after another. Uh, and everything that comes out of her mouth is essentially horrible. <laughs> um, the only replacement I want to see is Marjorie Taylor Greene replaced with someone who isn't a raging white supremacist.